welcome to AF Math and Engineering. If you're enjoying this video and our channel, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button down below, because we're always releasing new videos and new content for engineering students. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, welcome back. Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. And we're going to do a video for you on Castellano's second theorem, and we're going to do it uh, related to trusses. So we're going to solve a pretty straightforward truss problem, and uh, we're going to show you a couple of tricks. We're going to show you the method, and we're going to explain a little bit um, how uh, this formula is derived so that you have a little better understanding. Cool. So we have a truss here on the left. Pretty simple truss, 120 kilonewton load, uh, lateral load here, and uh, everything else is given up here. And we're asked to determine the horizontal and vertical components of the deflection at point B. So they're not just asking for horizontal, they're not just asking for vertical, they're asking for both. And there is like a, a good way to do this, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, so let's go over uh, the formula for Castellano's theorem for trusses first. And it's a pretty straightforward derivation. I don't usually do derivations, but I kind of like to do it for, for this method because um, I, I know some professors, I, I found anyway, don't really explain it that well. First, the formula we need to look at is the formula for strain energy. The formula that we need to look at is the formula for strain energy, okay, because uh, Castellano's theorem is a work energy method. So, uh, with that being said, we need to understand what the strain energy is for uh, a member of a truss. So, um, for a member of a truss, we simply have that, okay, the strain energy, we'll call it UJ, of a member is one half, okay, times the force within that member, okay, times the axial deformation. That is simply equal to, okay, F squared L over 2AE, okay. Uh, so, we multiplied FL over AE. Uh, by this whole thing essentially, and that's the uh, FL over AE is the axial deformation for a member. And uh, for an entire truss, that means this, that means U for the entire truss is simply just the summation of all of the strain energy. So we have the sum of F squared L over 2 AE. Cool. So now this here is the, uh, the this formula, the equation for uh, the, the, the total strain energy within a single truss. For Castellano's second theorem, Castellano's second theorem essentially was uh, for linearly, linearly elastic st structures, uh, the partial derivative of the strain energy with respect to an applied force. So in this case, we're going to apply a load P in the direction that we want to find uh, the deflection in. So if we want to find horizontal, we'll apply it horizontally. So the partial der derivative of this strain energy with respect to an applied force, uh, P, is equal to the displacement of the force along its line of action. Okay. So how we write that is we say the partial derivative of strain energy U okay, with respect to some load that we're going to impose P is equal to the deflection. So in, in the direction I essentially. Cool. So now how do we finally get to the Castellano second theorem formula for trusses? Well, for each member then, um, we have that the deflection okay, is simply uh, knowing this, okay, that the partial derivative of the strain energy is equal to the deflection, we have the strain energy for the, the truss, so we can say the partial derivative, okay, with respect to P of U, so the sum of F squared L over 2AE, okay, we take the derivative of this with respect to P, okay, so we implicitly differentiate, and we're going to get that the deflection, okay, is simply just the sum of the partial derivative of the force in each member with respect to P times FL over AE. Cool. And that's the formula for the uh, for Cassiano's second theorem for trusses. So that is what we're going to use here. So um, with that being said, let's go ahead and let's head over to the problem. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to apply our load P. If you don't know, um, we did a pretty introductory video on applying the load P, so go back, I'll put it in the comments. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to draw two trusses here. We're going to kind of do, kind of do like a superposition of sorts. Okay. Where for uh, the left truss, we're going to do the horizontal deflection, the right truss, we're going to do the vertical deflection, and we're going to add them together, and we're going to do them all at once, and that's going to save us a little bit of time here. So the first step in Castellano's second theorem is to apply our load P in the direction of action. So when we take the partial derivative, that's the deflection that we're getting. So if we apply the load P here, okay, because we're asked to find the deflection at, and horizontal components at B, okay, uh, we're going to call that P1. Okay, And e if there is a force here, Okay, we're going to draw in brackets equal to 120. If there's no force, we're just going to equal it to zero. And we're going to do that at the end, but let's do everything in terms of P first. Cool. And we're going to take away uh, all the other loadings, if there aren't any, and we're just going to go ahead and try and find the reactions here. Okay, so these are reactions. We have A and C here. Okay. Now uh, we have, and this is four meters and three meters. Okay, cool. So uh, we need to find the reactions at A and C. 
So for A here, we have um, the only other force in the x direction is uh, P. So this is also P. That's, that one's pretty easy. What about A and C? Well, let's find, uh, let's find A, for example. Um, I, the reason why I drew the reactions this way is because there's a couple moment this way. So uh, we know that this has to create a moment in order to counteract that one. I could have drawn them both up, but then we'd get a negative for A. So let's come over here and let's find the reactions at A. So let's take the moment at C. Okay, so we're taking the moment at C. Okay, we're going to get that we have P times 4. Uh, this is negative direction. So we have P1 times 4. And then we have positive AY times 3, that's equal to 0. So we should get that AY is simply 4 over 3 P1. Just write that like that. I know it's a little messy. Okay, and uh, there's a, no other force in the Y direction, so this is also 4 over 3 P1. It's just in the other direction. Okay, cool. So uh, now that we've uh, solved this truss for the reactions, we need to go ahead and just find the member's forces, the internal force essentially. So um, as we can see for this joint here, there's only two forces in the x direction. So this this force here is P1, okay, and it is simply in tension. Same for here, okay. We only have another force in the in the y direction, and that that's this. So this is four over three, P1. So that's member AB, okay. And uh, I'll leave it up to you to find CB, okay. Um, I'll just give it to you here. It's 1.667 P1. So uh, that's uh, that's done there. Try and get that one on your own because uh, we're running out of time a little bit on this one. So uh, let's go to the second truss. Okay, so we're going to add these two trusses together in a table at the end. So now this one. So this was the horizontal. Okay, we're going to say that this is the vertical component of the deflection. So for this one, we're going to apply our p downwards. Okay. So let's apply our p, and there is no uh, vertical load on the uh, the external load on the actual one, so this is just going to be equal to zero, okay? And this is A, B, sorry, this is B, A, C, four meters, three meters, and now we can go ahead and solve for the reactions. As you can see in this truss, this is fairly simple. This is a classic exam trick too, um, is you take a look at this and you see there's no other lateral forces, so that means that this uh, reaction in the x direction is equal to zero here, okay? And the only other force is this needs to be P2 here, okay? These two are both zero force members here, okay? So this is a zero force member, this is a zero force member, and if you just go ahead and you just take a section here, if you just cut this section, you'll find that there's actually no, uh, there's no force in this side of the truss, okay? So this is just P2, that's P2, and the force in this member is P2, and that is a compressive force here. Okay, cool. So uh, let's take a look at how we solve this. So what did we do here? Well, we found the forces in all of the members of the horizontal truss for the horizontal deflection. We found all of the forces in the vertical truss for the vertical deflection. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a table. And we're going to use that table to solve for um, all the things that we need in this formula. Okay, cool. So I've gone ahead and I've drawn out the uh, table for you already. So uh, what we have here is we have a column with members, the lengths, and uh, as you'll notice, uh, each column represents a variable in this formula. And then these last two are the summations of, uh, of all of these together, and we'll just add them up on the bottom and then we're done. We can go ahead and plug in. Now, as you can see here, we have P1 and P2 columns, because we're going to do each one kind of separately here, and then we can just do them at the same time. So um, let's go ahead and start. So our lengths are 3, 4, and 5 meters. And for our force here, uh, we're just going to add the forces in each member of each truss in both of these together and put them in this column. So for we have P is uh, the force in the member AC here. Uh, we, this is a zero force member, so this is just going to be P1. For AB, we're going to take a look here, and we have 4 over 3 P1. So we're going to say 1.33 P1. And uh, we have P2 here. Okay, And that, this one's tension, this one's compression, so we're going to subtract that. And for this one here, we have 1.667, that's compression, times P1, and this is a zero force member. Cool, so now we need to take the partial derivative with respect to P1 of all of these expressions here. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is just simply going to be 1, this is going to be 1.333, and negative 1.667. The partial derivative of this with respect to P2, so this is going to be 0, this is going to be 
negative 1, and this is 0. So for the, this column here, we're going to multiply the partial derivative of uh, f with respect to p1 times f times l, and we're going to go ahead and plug in p1 or p2 in this case if we have one. So in the first trust we do, we have p1, but we don't have a p2, it's equal to 0. We will plug that in, we'll just plug 0 in. So let's plug in 120. Okay, so we have 3 times f, which is p1, so that's 120, and we're going to multiply by 1, and that's just going to simply be 360. Okay, perfect. Let's move on to the second row here. So uh, same thing, let's just multiply by 4, and then we're going to multiply by this whole expression here. P2 is 0, P1 is 120, so 120 times 1.333 times 1.333, that's going to give us 853.33. And same thing, 5 times this, plug in the P1, times negative 1.667, that's going to give us 1666.67. And same thing over here, uh, exactly the same thing. That's going to be 0, 640, and 0. And let's go ahead and summate those, okay? Because in the formula, you can see we have a sigma here. This is just going to be 2880, okay? And we're going to have negative 640 as the summation. Now, what do we need to do? Well, we simply just need to go to the formula now, and we just need to divide these two terms by AE to get both the horizontal and the vertical deflections. Because this, these two terms are the sigma partial f by partial p times fl, this ae here. Okay, we just need to plug in, that's constant, so we could just do that at the end. So let's come over here. Cool, so now um, all we're going to do is we're just going to find the deflection at, the horizontal deflection at b. And uh, what we're going to do is we're just, we'll just take the uh, numerator, which is this term here. We're going to put it in, make sure we're using kilonewtons and meters. We're going to plug in e, so this is e here. This is a. Uh, we divided by a thousand squared to get it to meters, and we get 9.6 millimeters uh, horizontal deflection at B. Let's find the vertical deflection. Okay, so the vertical deflection, same thing. We have negative 640. That's going to be divided by 200 times 10 to the 6 times 0 0.0015. So we're going to get a value of 2.13 millimeters. Okay, and uh, that's negative, right? So this value is negative. We assume down, that's incorrect, so the deflection is actually up at this point. Sorry for the writing, guys. I got to the end of the page there, and I got a little bit messy. Um, but I did say the answer, and I think you can read that, so that's good. Yeah, that's it for Castellano's second theorem for trusses. Uh, if you want to see another example problem like this, uh, these kind of get a little bit messy with the tables and stuff and the two trusses. So I tried as hard as I could to try and keep it uh, neat for you. So hopefully you enjoyed that guys, uh, thanks for watching, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, and see you next time.